I've always been close with my mother, I've never really had a stable girlfriend. So, one time, I get serious with this girl. We don't really work out, so I go back to tell my mother about the whole scenario. And that's when she tells me, Oh, you don't have to worry, honey. I already found you a lovely girl. A lovely girl. Well, she was lovely. Huh. <laughs> At first. What's up, guys? I'm a male, 34 years of age. I've been dating Sally for seven years now. She's an amazing person, and we were very much in love. I really believed that she was the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. But unfortunately, the other day, I received some text messages from Sally that clearly were not intended for my eyes. She has a lot of friends, and they have a group chat, so they're always texting one another. It isn't unusual for Sally to have her nose buried in her phone most of the time. This doesn't bother me, as she's quite present, even when she's texting, and I like that she does have friends. She often goes out on these girl nights, and I often go out with my buddies. We had struck up a pretty nice little balance between couples time and personal time, so we were very happy. Well, the other day, I was sitting on my couch. Sally was sitting right beside me, texting away when I received some messages from her that really quite upset me. She was talking about how disgusting she finds me, making jokes about my weight, all kinds of awful things, and things you'd be paranoid about that a significant other would think about you, but that you never thought they'd actually say. There were a lot more messages that I don't exactly want to get into the details of, and she did say a lot of awful things, but the one that struck me the most was that she had said she would only be with me because of the money. For some background, my father was hurt pretty badly while working once and ended up getting a pretty huge settlement from the company. And instead of spending it, he invested it and grew it. This happened when he was pretty young, like 25 in the 1980s. So with compounding interest, he became pretty wealthy pretty fast. When he died, all the money was left to me because he and mom got a divorce when I was 8 years old. I don't like to touch that money very much, I'm keeping it for early retirement, but I also have a pretty good job in tech that pays me pretty well. I'm not insanely rich by any means, but I've always been comfortable, and probably always will be. Sally grew up in a pretty rough environment, almost the exact opposite of me. Her mother died a few months after she was born and her father was addicted to drugs, so she had a very financially insecure childhood. This had led her to be quite obsessive with money. She hoards food that she doesn't need because there was barely enough to feed her and her older sisters, and she's very tight with money. Add this to the fact that she lost her job during COVID and still hasn't managed to find a new one, and it's pretty obvious why she would want to be with someone who has a good number on their bank statement. Obviously, I've had all these thoughts before. It kind of comes with the territory of being a big guy with a gorgeous girlfriend. You wonder what's in it for her. Wonder what she's like about you and if it's not your look, stuff like that, here in your head, blah, blah, blah. She always reassured me that she loved me for my personality. And even for the way I look, and after a while, I started to genuinely believe that she did. I started to see myself as attractive. And it did wonders for my self-esteem. So you can understand why it was such a blow to my ego and confidence to discover that every kind of thing she's ever said to me was just nothing more than a complete, utter lie. I sat there quietly for about an hour after I got those messages. I don't know why. I think I was in too big of an amount of shock just to confront her right away. It was probably the worst hour of my life, to tell you the truth. Not even my father's funeral can measure up to the way that I felt right then and there. Every time her phone would bring a new message, I could see countless potential insults about me that it could say. She even started cuddling up to me, and I was just so frozen that I let her. Yeah. I did finally get a hold of myself, though, thank goodness. She was in the kitchen getting a drink. And I finally shook myself out of whatever stupor I was in and went to confront her. I don't really want to think about how the whole thing went down. 
She was crying, I was crying, she was lying, saying that she had no idea what I was talking about, that she had never sent those, so I asked her to show me her phone to prove it, but she refused. Which pretty much just proved my point, didn't it? I left after packing up some clothes. I've been paying the rent in our apartment ever since she's lost her job, and it's in my name on the lease, so I told her that I wanted her out by next Monday. It hurt a lot to see her cry the way she did, but every time I could feel my anger settling down, I could just see those text messages popping up in my mind. I just got so angry that I didn't even know how to breathe. It was absolutely horrible. So, I'm currently sitting in the McDonald's rest stop on the highway on the way to my mother's house. She lives about three states away from me, so it'll take a while to get there, but I really just want to talk to her right now. We've had a rough relationship over the past few years, but I know that she won't turn her own son away. I haven't even talked to her in two years, and I'm just hoping she still lives in the same address. She's always enjoying moving, and I had eight different houses throughout my childhood. I'm just hoping that she managed to stay in one place for two years. My mom and I were really close when I was young. I think she clung to me because dad was so emotionally distant. He cheated on her. <laughs> a lot. So I think I was pretty much her surrogate husband. I fulfilled all her emotional needs and this did a lot of my damage to me mentally as well. I think. Having to take care of my mom at such a young age, but that isn't what caused us to stop talking. No. See... Mom had a really rough time when I started to grow up and stopped wanting to spend so much time with her. She became even more clingy when she and dad got a divorce, but I was eight years old. And after a few years, I was becoming a teenager and man of the house and wanted to be independent and have fun, but I could not when I knew my mom was at home waiting for me so that she could vent about her day. We somehow managed to get through the difficult teenage years, but things took a turn for the worst when I got my first girlfriend at age 15. Guys, it wasn't even anything serious. I barely knew what the difference between a boyfriend and a friend was, but mom really hated it. She got super clingy and she tried to convince me that I didn't need anybody but her, and she became weirdly affectionate. She was like always affectionate, but I mean she starts kissing me on the cheek and baking fresh bakery items every single day. I didn't realize it at the time, but I'm pretty sure that she was trying to make me gain weight so that the girl would lose interest in me and sure enough, that's what happened. I never thought that it was super weird or anything the way my mom acted towards any girl that I was close to. I thought that was just the way moms were. But once I started dating Sally, she sort of opened my eyes to just how weird my mom actually was being. I'll skip over all the stupid drama that happened between them, but after a while, I began to see just how disrespectful my mother was, being to my relationship, and I cut her off completely. I'm still mad at her for everything that she's done, but I need her right now. It may be petty, but... I want to sit with her and talk badly about Sally. All my friends love her, so I know that my mom is my best bet. I just need someone to tell me that I'm too good for her, even though I know it isn't true. Alright guys, Mr. Redito here, so we're about to hop into this absolutely crazy story. Update number one is about to head right at you, and just so you know, it's a little wild. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button for daily videos and so you never miss a full update. Alright guys, here is update number one. Hey, I know that nobody asked for it, but I realized while writing that initial post that it felt pretty cathartic to get everything off my chest. So, I thought I'd just treat this thread like a diary or something. I've been at my mother's house for about a week now. It was initially kind of awkward when I showed up. Two years is a really long time to go without seeing somebody, but we settled into our usual dynamic pretty quickly. Just like I thought, 
Mom is the perfect person to go during a breakup. I won't even type the nasty thing she said about my now ex. But they made me laugh, which was hard to do. Obviously, those things aren't true, but when somebody hurts you, you just need to hear someone else confirm that they're awful. And mom, oh, she's doing that all right. Even though I think she may be enjoying it just a bit too much. I also think that I've gained at least 10 pounds in the past week because mom has been cooking up a storm. Every time I go into the kitchen, there's some sort of cake or cookie just waiting on the counter for me, piping hot. And I swear she's giving me triple portions at mealtime. She herself barely finishes a plate of steamed vegetables for dinner, but I get chastised if I don't finish everything on my plate, which is enough to feed several bodybuilders. She wants to set me up with someone, and I really don't want to. But she's pretty insistent. I don't want to be rude, seeing as we've only just started talking again after such a long time. But I'm not interested in dating anybody right now. My heart's still in pieces over Sally, and it feels like I've never been over her. Obviously, I know that isn't true, but a week after a breakup is still way too soon to consider other people. On the other hand, Mom's never wanted me to date someone before, so I'm kind of curious to see what kind of person this girl is. Every girl I've ever brought home has been unsuitable in Mother's eyes. So yeah, I am a bit intrigued to see the person that she calls my perfect little match. I can't emphasize how much my mom wants me to be with this person. She's already picking out baby names. Yeah, baby names. And I haven't even met the girl yet. I'm not ready to date again, so not this soon after my breakup, and I doubt that anyone mom approves of will be even remotely my type but I want to make her happy, so yeah, I agreed. I will go on this one blind date. <laughs> I'm supposed to meet this girl tomorrow night at a local restaurant, and yeah, I'm nervous. Because I know I look like crap. As I said, mom's been feeding me like crazy over the past few weeks, so I have gained some weight, and my face has broken out worse than it has since I was a teenager. After what Sally said about the way I look... I feel like hiding in my apartment for the rest of my entire life. Refusing to let anybody see me. I feel so disloyal. Like I'm betraying Sally by agreeing to go on a date so soon after a breakup. Well, I think that has something to do with the residual love that I still have for this woman. So I'm trying to squash that down. I'll let you guys know exactly how the date goes. Update number two. Hey guys, I just got back from the date and I'm a little tipsy, but I wanted to let you guys know how it went. Mom's already given me the third degree and forced me to recount every single second of the evening to her, replay it in her head. So I thought that I might as well go ahead and write it all down while the memory's so fresh. The girl, Emily, super nice. We didn't really have that much in common, but we somehow ended up having a lot to talk about. She works in sales at a local clothing store, and she grew up here. So she told me all about her childhood. She isn't, uh, super gorgeous, but she's pretty. Pretty in a quiet way. Think librarian. It felt nice to have someone to talk to again. Someone other than my mom. It was really easy to talk to her, too. I normally have trouble keeping a conversation going, but not with Emily. She's just super chatty which is a plus. So, there were no awful awkward silences to fill. Honestly, I expected to go on this date, get it over with, and put it out of my head just to make mother happy. But I really do think that I'd like to see this girl again. We arranged to meet up in a few days for some coffee, and I'll probably be a lot less nervous with a casual coffee date than with a swanky black tie restaurant one. Anyways... I'm actually finding myself looking forward to seeing her. The only thing that went wrong on our first date was that when I turned my phone on to get her number, hundreds, and I'm talking hundreds, of calls, text messages, even emails from Sally came rolling in. 
I turned my phone off when I got to my home because, well, I've been using her computer to access the internet. Mothers. So, all the calls and texts from the past week just came in at once, and my phone froze up. Emily made a joke to ease the tension, but I was a little antsy for the rest of the date. I haven't read any of the messages or listened to any of the calls. I've just deleted them as they came in. Of course, while deleting the text messages, I did catch a few words. But I try not to read too much. Just a lot of stories and call me backs in there, which are to be expected. I had a good night, all things considered. And we even ordered dessert, which I thought was going to be too self-conscious to do, but she suggested it first. It was nice, and I didn't feel self-conscious at all. I'm really looking forward to seeing her again. Update number three. Well, guys, things have been going pretty well with Emily. She's sweet, she's kind, and she's really easy to talk to. It feels like my mom was right about her, which I don't say lightly after all the drama she's caused with Sally. The only issue I have with her is that she's kind of pushy. It's been almost two months now since we started dating and she told me that she loved me the week after we met. It's really random, <laughs> so sudden. I don't even know what to say, I was really put on the spot and I just blurted out I love her too. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest, but I was just so startled that it kind of blurted out with my little brain <laughs> without even having time to think. Mom, she's delighted. I think the two of them have been texting each other behind my back or something because, well, when I got back to my mother's house after the I love you debacle, she already knew about it somehow. I'm back home now and I stayed with my mom for about a month, but eventually... I started to feel kind of smothered. She's quite overbearing, as you may have noticed by now. The thing is, Emily has come with me. I think it was my mom that suggested she comes to stay with me for a while at first, just as like a little vacation type deal. When the two of them started planning and whispering to each other, I kind of just zoned out. So, the next thing I knew, Emily was packing up what seemed looked like her entire life into my car, she was supposed to stay with me for a week, but she's still here living in my apartment, eating my food, and waiting for me when I get back from work. I mean, it's nice, I guess, in a way. I was dreading coming back to the apartment I shared with Sally and living here alone, so it does keep the boredom at bay, but it's a little bit like living with my mom, I guess. Every time I turn, there she is, smiling at me and asking, Do you need anything? She's even taking it upon herself to redecorate the entire place to her own taste. A little woman taste, she says, doesn't hurt. I don't know where she gets the money. She doesn't work, but she seems to always have enough just to get by. Well... I'm going on a business trip next week, and I was looking forward to having some alone time, just being alone with my thoughts, but the next thing I knew, my boss was calling me into the office and telling me that my girlfriend had emailed me and asked to book a double room in the hotel. I'm mad that she went behind my back and did that, but I'm weary of confronting her. She's a nice girl, and I've yet to see her lose her temper but I get the feeling that she can really get nasty when she needs to. I enjoy my time with her, but it really does feel like a tiny clone of my mother, just following me around, sleeping in my bed, and when I wake up, there she is, smiling again. When I go to sleep, she's beside me. It feels like a little claustrophobic puppy, to tell you the truth. I don't know, maybe I'm just being melodramatic. Emily hasn't actually done anything wrong to warrant me feeling this way. I mean, she cooks, she cleans, she asks about me all day. Maybe I'm still just hung up over Sally. Anyways, that's all for me now. I'll come back in a while to let you know how everything is going. Update number four. Well, I'm getting married in the morning. I know that's probably not the update you guys were expecting, and believe me, this wasn't my plan either. Emily, she's pregnant. We've only been dating for a year, but once she and my mom got together, there's no standing in the way. 
I only found out two months ago that she was pregnant. And in the span of those two months, a wedding's already been planned somehow with zero input from me. I don't want to get married, I'm just not ready. I have no idea how to be a husband, and the fact that I'll become a father so soon, it's terrifying. What I do know about either of those things? Well, I've tried talking to Emily and explained to her that I'm not ready, but she just explodes on me whenever I try to broach the subject. Her parents, oh boy, they are crazy religious. They don't know that she's pregnant and the entire wedding has been planned around making sure they don't find out. The dress has been designed to hide the bump. She's already coming up with excuses for her parents not be able to come once the baby's born. She's planning on saying the baby's premature and hoping that by the time they actually meet the kid, she can just say that it's a fast grower. Mom, well, mom wants a boy. Emily wants a boy. I don't know what I want anymore. It feels like everything's just come to rest on my shoulders like I'm buried in an avalanche on expectations and responsibilities. The worst part is that the entire wedding has been paid for with my savings. Emily doesn't approve of my retiring early. She says that's a lazy dream. So we have plenty of time before, well, I retire to build back up the money my dad left me. Ah. <sighs> I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. My bachelor party was just me surrounded by Emily's brothers, pretending to be glad that I'm marrying their sister so they didn't beat me up or something. Now, in 12 hours, I'll be somebody's husband. And I don't know, I don't so much as have cold feet. I have polar ice caps. Update number five. Hey guys, I know, it's been a long time since the last update. Very long time since I've posted on here, well, I know my life isn't the most riveting thing in the world, but I have had one or two people reaching out to me and asking how I've been. So, I appreciate that a lot, we'll start with the great news. My wife gave birth to a baby girl in December, named Haley, 5 pounds, 7 ounces. Reading back on the last part I typed up, I can see that I was really nervous to become a father, and I wish that I could go back in time and tell myself that everything was going to be okay. The minute I set my eyes on that little girl, I was just so taken back with her, in a way that I never thought possible. The newborn stage is hard, granted, but I would not change it for the world. For the less exciting news, my mom's moved to the city to be closer to her first grandchild. This would have been fine and all if she had not decided that she wanted to keep her old house as a vacation home. Emily decided that because mom would be providing us with so much free childcare, we might as well pay for her new apartment. I've long since given up arguing with Emily. Once she gets an idea in her head, that's what's happening, so no matter what anyone else might want. Mom's been around a lot for the past six months, and I'm even out more money. The hopes of retiring early, that somehow weren't crushed by the crazy wedding cost, were absolutely decimated with all the other purchases. I'm doing pretty well, all things considered. I'm just chugging along, choo-choo. Working, coming home, playing with the baby. I think Emily's anxious to get pregnant again, though I can't for the life of me understand why. Just one child is draining my energy. I can't even begin to imagine what two could do. I also can't imagine loving any child the way I love my daughter, so I'd be worried that I'd always have a favorite. I think part of it is my mom's doing. She was so determined that Haley was going to be a boy that even after her gender reveal confirmed with a scan, my mom was talking about how inaccurate those things are and she looked it up. I mean, she was even knitting a blue blanket right up until the day Haley was born. She won't even let her use it either. She says she'll keep it for the first boy. Don't get me wrong, mom's a good grandma. She does love Haley, but she really was very disappointed when she was born. Mom and Emily's relationship has seemed to get a bit strained. Before Haley was born, 
When Mom first moved here, she was still thick as thieves with Emily. Even though we knew the baby was a girl. She was just so sure the scan was wrong, but as soon as Haley was born, Mom started acting cold towards Emily and Emily towards Mom. I don't 100% know what their issue is, but it's causing a lot of stress in our home. Mom shows up unannounced to see Haley, and you can cut the tension between them with a knife. I often wish I could take the baby out for a walk to get away from it all, but it seems like they're using her in some sort of tug-of-war match between each other. Despite the stress, I'm happy. I'm trying to utilize tunnel vision and just focus on Haley and work as much as I can. I'm leaving the women to sort out their problems with each other. Update number six. Final update. Hey everyone, I apologize for the long time between updates. I mean, it has almost been a year. But things got a little crazy since my last post. I thought that would be the last one anyways. I know I say that every time, but this time things have really taken a turn for the worse. Only a month after I posted the update, we discovered that Emily was pregnant again. Obviously, she and mom were overjoyed, but I wasn't. I know I talked about being nervous that I can never love another child as much as I love Haley, and that anxiety really took me over. Mom's beef with Emily seemed to have been disappeared, because the two of them were close as anything again. We decided to skip finding out the gender because we wanted to be surprised, and yet again, Mom was sure it was a boy. I'll skip through all the pregnancy stuff and tell you, <laughs> we had another girl, Michaela. Don't worry, my anxieties were proven to be false and I love her just as much as my first daughter. I've really taken to being a father more than I ever thought would be possible. The issue is mom. Again, after Michaela's birth, she started to get moody. Emily seemed to like think she was desperate to get pregnant again and the whole cycle just started all over again. This time, I put my foot down and told her that I was not ready for a third child. Although she did seem shocked that I was standing up to her, she agreed. This is where things start to get, ugh, really, really messy. We arrive at my mother's house for Thanksgiving last week, as we do every year. My mom loves hosting Thanksgiving, and she puts in a lot of effort. She hand draws these place cards every year, but this year, when we arrived... There was no place card for Emily. I figured that mom had just forgotten, but no. When I asked, she said that she's no longer considering Emily a part of the family because she was incapable of delivering a son. Now, I hadn't known that this thing between them was so darn serious, and I was more than shocked when mom said that Emily was, well, staring daggers at me. And mom was staring daggers at her. The two most important women in my life, both of which have a habit of telling me what to do, were on each other's side of me. Honestly, I felt like I owed more to Emily as my wife, so I told my mother that we are leaving. I don't think she expected me to take Emily's side because her eyes get all big and wide and she starts to say something but Emily just pulls me away. So, we finally get home and she immediately starts packing her things and talking about going to her parents' house. I was trying to be helpful. I thought she just needed to get away for a while and she'd come back once she calmed down. So, I was helping her pack when she suddenly blew up and starts screaming at me, calling me a fat waste of space, a mama's boy, all kind of awful things. She'd never spoken to me like this before, so I was just kind of frozen where I stood. Then, when she starts talking, really talking, telling me everything, my mom had been paying her all this time. From the very first date we went on, to the wedding, through everything, my mother had been paying this woman, my wife, to stay with me. Apparently... The deal was that mom would keep paying if Emily and I had a son. And since she had not, mom stopped the cash flow. My wife's left me and she didn't take the kids with her. I'm sitting alone in the apartment we share and the girls are asleep. I called my mother and she admitted to everything. 
She even faked those text messages from Sally all those years ago to break us up because she didn't want half-Asian grandchildren. And I let her. I just allowed all of it. Just floated along while this woman dictated my life. I'm disgusted with myself. I'm grieving what I thought was my marriage. I'm grieving the fact I didn't allow Sally who, in all honesty, was probably the love of my life to explain herself. I'm furious. I know, it sounds materialistic, but I'm mad about the money too. Every single plan I've ever had for my entire life has been crushed. I love my girls, but I could go back, I would undo everything. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I anticipate my life being very hard for the next few years, if not longer, but I intend to take every possible thing down with me. Mom's apartment? Yeah, that's being sold. <laughs> she can cry, she can sob, she can beg, but my name's the one on the lease, and there's no way I'm going to let that manipulative little jerk of a woman stay in a home that I've bought, I've purchased with my own hardcore Benjamins. First thing in the morning, I'm calling a lawyer. I don't care what I have to do, but I will be getting custody of those two little girls no matter what. I'll get a divorce too if it's feasible, but honestly, if it turns out Emily wants a divorce, I'm kicking my feet the entire way. I want to make this as difficult for her as humanly possible. My entire life has just about crumbled down around me, and I'm going to be the one to pick up the pieces this time. I'm done letting those people control my life. From now on, it's me and my girls. They're all I care about, and I'll do everything I can to protect them from their mom and grandmother. Ugh. The wildest part for me is the girlfriend and the mother of this story were actually in cahoots. I mean, OP's mother paid for OP to have a girlfriend? Could you even imagine being in this awful roller coaster of a toxic situation? I want off at the first stop. Let me know what you would do if you were in this exact scenario slash position. Go ahead and drop it in the comment section. Maybe you've had a toxic relationship like this where your family gets involved. Drop your opinions below. Guys, if you're new to the channel or if you've been here for a while, just check right now. See if you're subscribed to the channel. Most people who watch the videos aren't actually subscribed. It helps me out a lot. It only takes a second, so thank you. Have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one.